University and um, this is my body of work that I've created uh, this year. And um, so yeah, I just wanted to share a little bit with you about what I've done and um, I wanted to also have a time of questions at the very end just because I know this work has got questions all around it so I, I would love to have you guys ask any questions you have at the end. Um, but welcome. Um, first of all, before I start, I just wanted to thank some people. Um, thanks to the Phoenix for just opening this place and all their help and my family members and my friends who've helped me set up and my professors uh, just for their encouragement and, um, and, and for like just help throughout this whole process um, and just all my friends, you know who you are, and just all of your help. So um, anyways, thank you. It's good to have you here. But um, I just want to introduce this work to you. It's like introducing a friend, I feel like, but um, this is my friend for about a year. Uh, this is Elusive Intentions, The Vision Cycle. Um, it's a series of 11 paintings that I started creating in February of this past year, and I finished my last painting in December, so it feels almost like a baby to me, like it's been growing all year, and <laughs> finally you get to meet it, so um, thank you guys for coming. Um, but I guess I'll just get started um, and kind of give you the, the basic metaphor and tell you a little bit a couple of the paintings and then you guys can shoot your questions at me but um, so this is elusive intentions the vision cycle and um, elusive is a word that means hard to catch hard to realize hard to capture and an intention is something that you desire something that you are working towards something that you want to see happen something that you want to make reality and um, the phrase the vision cycle uh, refers to the cycle of a vision from its first conception in your mind until its maturity. And um, so that's kind of what my title means in a nutshell. Um, but my, my metaphor, I think you guys, there's a lot of fish and there's a lot of hands and there's mountains and there's purples and greens. So like, what does it all mean? Um, I have a lot of fish. <laughs> so I've been painting fish all year. <laughs> and for me, a fish symbolizes an intention. A fish symbolizes a dream. A fish symbolizes a vision that you have for your future. Um, and uh, I just was thinking one day, I think it was in January, I was on an airplane and I was kind of dozing off and I just had this weird thought, like sometimes that happens. And you know, I just had this weird thought like, I wish I could remember my dreams like all the time because I bet they're awesome like you know we have weird dreams at night and you know it's almost like trying to catch a fish in the water with your bare hands it's just really hard to remember and like catch and so that I kind of started thinking about that and developing that further and I have a memory of when I was younger uh, we had a creek behind our house in Georgia and we'd go down there we'd play around and we would catch we'd try to catch these little minnows that were in the water they'd be darting around moving quickly and like, I don't think I ever caught one. I don't, I mean, we tried with a net and I, I remember falling in the water, but I don't think we ever caught anything. So um, that, that, that idea of trying to catch a fish with your hands um, and how hard that is really stuck with me. And I began to process that further and I took it way beyond dreams at night to apply to dreams you have for your life. Um, I think everyone could say, as a child, someone asked them, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do? And when you get to college, it's like, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And when you're an adult, like, where do you want your kids to go? What do you want your kids to do? What do you want to grow up? What are your dreams? What are your kids' dreams? Um, and that's just a question that I think we all have, and I don't think we ever fully answer. I mean, I, I'm still asking that question, and I'm a senior, and I'm supposed to be knowing what I'm doing with my life. I mean, I think I know, but I, I know things change. And um, so I kind of, I just was exploring, like, where do dreams come from? What are dreams? Why do we have dreams? Um, and this year has been kind of a hard year for me. Um, I've been asking a lot of questions. I've been applying to grad school. Um, I recently found out I got into a program, and for me that was a dream that kind of came true after a year of hard work. And um, But kind of just asking the question of why do I make art? Like, why am I an artist? Like, why am I even here? Like, at moments I was like, why am I here? You know, <laughs> having moments of desperation. And, um, so some of these paintings are just kind of birthed from the depth of that. Um, and I wanted to talk about a couple of them in specific, just to kind of give you a grid mark for kind of the rest of these. But um, as you can see, there are um, what look like round circles. Those are embryos. Um, those are fish embryos in particular. And those represent um, the birth of a dream, the inception, the conception, the gestation of a dream in your heart or in your mind. And I carry that um, illustration forward with plants, and I have plants here. Um, to represent the, like the growing process of a dream like 
you know, you have, a, you have an initial thought that flashes across your mind, but you have to water it, you have to feed it, you have to have people breathe life on your dream, you have to have people hop on board with that and encourage that, um, otherwise not much happens. Um, I think in America we're in a society where we see dreams happening instantaneously for a lot of people. We got YouTube stars, you know, it's kind of the American dream to get discovered and make it big and, you know, you watch a 45 minute episode and all of a sudden, like, you know, you watch Deadliest Catch or something and in 45 minutes they catch a giant fish and then it's on the table with a lemon and parsley and like, in 45 minutes and I don't think that's happened to anybody. So, <laughs> um, and just that's what we learn and that's what we hear and I am tired of that and it, it bothers me. And so these paintings are kind of a study of that. And um, so as the paintings progress, you see these embryos and they're transitioning and you see these hands and hands, these are actually my own hands that I photographed and um, you know, I set a timer on my camera and flopped down on the ground and like, you know, posed my hands, you know, like, I'm so glad no one's seen those photos. Um, <laughs> but these are my hands and um, to me it's very symbolic of my own pursuit for my own dreams, but I think it can be larger to represent your own pursuits for your own dreams. I don't think anybody in this room would say that things just happen for them automatically every single time. I think you guys all understand the struggle that it takes to, you know, have a career, have a family, um, grow up, you know, that's hard. <laughs> and so I think everyone can relate, but um, these hands represent a dreamer's efforts to capture that dream. And um, in these paintings over here, um, the embryo, a lot of times my fish and my embryos are hidden under the earth. And I use the land to represent the landscape of your mind and the, just the, the place where our dream dwells and the place where our dream grows. And the, the hand, the dreamer can't quite see the dream. Um, these two paintings, are called reaching for that which is unseen as though it were a mountain is the second piece. And they kind of go together to make one piece, but they're also separate. Um, because in this piece, you have the fully mature dream, but it's hidden and you can't see it. And it's moving, but you don't know it that it's there. And then over here, you have a growing dream that it's still growing. And the dreamer is reaching for it, trying to make it happen, but it's not quite there yet. And there's this kind of sense of expectancy that's in a lot of my pieces. And, like the not quite yet feeling um, that I wanted to portray because a lot of this year for me has been not quite yet. Just that, that process of, I don't, I'm not quite there yet. Like I'm, I'm, I feel like I've been like trying to just like hop out of my cocoon. Like this has been a year of me like submitting applications and going through that process and working and being an adult a little bit and then not liking it and going back to being, you know, like going back and forth. And um, so a lot of these pieces are just kind of significant of that. Um, and over here, I also asked what happens to dreams, because I think some people never see some of their dreams happen. And I think it's sad, but sometimes circumstances take your dreams from you. Um, things happen, bad things happen. Um, sometimes dreams we thought were dreams become nightmares because, you know, we're human and we make mistakes. Um, and so in these two paintings, these are called, they let their dreams die, then they were gone. And this is called polluted. And um, in these paintings, uh, there's no fish in this one, but in this painting, it starts off with like this moving, you know, healthy looking ground, there's a cliff, there's mountains, and it transitions into a city that looks like it's oozing this toxic waste. And in the center, um, in case you guys thought that was an alien, that's a fish. And <laughs> I know you guys have all had goldfish, and you know, after the next, the next day, they're just kind of floating, you know, that, that happens with goldfish, so this is a dead goldfish. Um, and this city has just oozed its toxicity onto this fish, and as you could guess, it's killed the fish. And so the idea is just that, I mean, you could take this environmentally, but I, I intended this as the environment of our mind, and the things we allow to pollute the environment of our mind, and the things we allow to destroy and ruin the dreams that have grown, that are there, but we've allowed influences either from our culture, people who have had voices in our life that have been negative, and just crushed our dreams, like things that we allow to do that. And that's what this piece is about. And this piece is kind of a, a partner piece. Um, and this is representative of people who just abandon their dreams. They give up. It's too hard. Tilling that field of dreams is just too much. And they give up. And it becomes desolate. And there's feelings of abandonment. There's feelings of anger. And you hear people walking around. And they're like, yeah, I wanted to be this when I got older. I wanted to do this. but..." I don't know, I just got busy, I couldn't afford it, I couldn't da, da 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 and you hear how people have abandoned and let go of things, and that's so sad, and I just have spent this year just thinking, like, I don't want to be that way, but it would be so tempting to just 
comfortably float through life, you know. And, and, and so this has just been a process of exploring. Why do we dream? Where do they go? What happens? Um, and I think that about sums up what I wanted to say, but I really, 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 really wanted you guys to give me feedback. Like, what kinds of things did you feel when you first walked in the door? What were some thoughts you had? Random questions. Just raise your hands. I'll take a couple minutes of those, and then you guys can go on your way. So, who has a question or statement? Yes. These are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Um, this one is actually very personal to me. Um, I created this one this summer, as you can tell. It's really big. It's four feet by three feet, and it's the biggest thing I've painted before. So <laughs> it was a challenge. My hands got tired. Um, but um, yeah, this is called Formed in Darkness, Birthed in Light. And um, in the center is a fish, and um, it's, it's like a fish being formed. This was before I started painting the embryos. I hadn't quite gotten to that stage yet. But it's a fish that's kind of in transition, it's growing, and um, the hand you know, is just reaching out over the fish. And um, to me, this painting represents um, the dreamer pouring out the dream. Because I don't believe that dreams just appear in your mind. I think that someone gives you a dream, someone inspires a dream. And whether you believe you know, God gives you dreams, or if you believe that you, know, you get inspiration from other people, like. I don't know, but I believe that dreams come from somewhere. And so in this painting, this is an exploration of who gives dreams, where do they come from, how are they formed, and the hand could represent even just the dreamer, like, you know, influencing and feeding and nurturing, because when, when something is being formed and being gestated, it doesn't just do it on itself, like it needs to be fed, it needs to be taken care of, and so this hand is kind of doing that and forming it, and um, the title, Formed in Darkness, Birthed in Light, is just indicative of, you know, you don't see it happening while it's being formed, but then when it's finally birthed and your dream is realized, it's it's very brilliant. And so, yeah, that's what this piece is about. Yeah. What does that hand on that one represent? This hand. Yeah. Um, this hand is kind of like hand three. That's like little branches on it. Um, to me, it's very indicative of almost the dreamer being angry and upset that their dreams didn't happen. Like. There's a sense of like frustration and anger and disappointment and abandonment because um, the, the painting is very empty and you see kind of this gaping barn over in the corner and it's just the idea that the dreamer has kind of given up and thrown in the towel and that kind of thing. So, so would you say that uh, the hand is like the dream that's going to see and it's passed from the point where it's really angry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could definitely be an interpretation of how, he, he said that with the hand be indicative that the dream has gone past the point of growing and it's gone to seed and it's no longer there and I, I think that's a, that's a, that's a good interpretation. With your choice of color palette, why did you choose to incorporate these warm colors and fairly solid pieces? That's a really good question. I love color questions. <laughs> My roommate will tell you that. Um, <laughs> um, I, I just was very inspired by, I, I used basically a palette of the same colors for all these paintings so that they were all connected. Um, I really, I wanted it to be very obvious, like particularly in the solemn pieces that, you know, I wanted them to be surreal and feel like dreams, like kind of, I was inspired by artists like, um, you know, Dolly and Chirico and um, Alexander Hoag were some of my influences and they use kind of off colors with different meanings and um, I just, I personally love bright colors and so making them into a, perhaps maybe you could say negative connotation was a challenge but it was kind of a fun challenge for me, so, yeah. Yes? Which one's your favorite and why? Oh my gosh, why do you have to ask that? <laughs> um, well, I was telling some people earlier that these ones were actually two of my favorite, um, just because I, I feel like they really, although they are kind of dark and sad, um, they really represent um, 
just kind of where I don't want to go. And I, I just, I, I feel my own personal, um, this year and just things that I've processed and how dreams haven't turned out necessarily the way I thought and things have changed and I've had to make different plans like it's it really rings true to my story so yeah not that my dreams are dead I have great dreams but <laughs> but yeah I'll take two more questions yes can you explain the black one that we're Yes, that was actually one of the first ones that I made. She asked, what's this black one with the fish um, and the hands? Um, uh, say it again. I thought that was how I was, but I'm, oh, like, I'm all the way over Yeah, no, it's a, it's a fish, and I, I don't think I mentioned, I, I chose an Aronda goldfish as my dream motif, and I actually had a fish that I owned for a couple months and took photos of and used, and so she was my model. And, so welcome, you know, but um, that piece is called Elusive and that was one of the like kind of explanatory pieces for this series I I should have mentioned it, but um, it's it's representative of the idea of trying to catch that dream with your hands um, So does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, okay Okay, last question. Who wants to do it? Yes So your color palette seems a little bit dark mm -hmm. and vague mm -hmm. Do you think that represents the struggle that you're Light, where hmm. Maybe subconsciously. I mean, that's a, she, her question was, does your color palette, it seems kind of dark, like does it indicate your quest for finding light and just that struggle? And I, I would, I'd be surprised, like I think, I think so. I, it's been, I mean, as I said, it's been a really rough year for me and um, I've had some ups and downs and my friends would, would be able to tell you that, but um, definitely like, I, I would say these colors are very, like, I wanted to portray a specific mood, and I think, especially for these paintings, they portrayed the mood, but there is kind of this eerie, almost surreal kind of look, and I think that lends itself very well for the, the idea of a dream, and like, you don't quite understand what's going on, and sometimes it's a little bizarre, and like, so I think it kind of lends itself well for that. Okay, well guys, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much.